I'm Lisa Tate and I am here with Jay Gates as we've been talking about. Jay Gates of Gates Antiques, he is the owner and uh, Gates Antiques is one of our Monday night sponsors of the Community Idea Station so it's so great to have you here this evening. Thank you very much. Um, Gates Antiques uh, is a family owned business that has been around for 50 years and it was started by your parents, is that right? That is correct. Oh, that's great. And um, Jay is a member of the New England Appraisers Association and he brought in a couple of chairs for us to look at this evening. Now in his line of work he has lots and lots of Antiques Roadshow stories that come his way all the time and tonight he brought in a couple of chairs from an office that he purchased just recently and he's going to tell us a little bit about it. Tell us, Jay. Sure. I brought in uh, two chairs out of a set of eight that I found. These chairs were being sold as dating the late 19th century, which means around 1890. And as you can see, this one is ready to go. This is how normally you find chairs. And everyone always wants to know, well, how do you tell a chair is 18th century? Well, the first thing that I do is I actually look at the back side of the chair and I look down here for what we call the shoe piece and that's this piece of wood here it's actually a separate piece from the seat rail 90 to 95 percent of the time if it has a shoe piece it's going to be 18th century if it doesn't it'll be 19th century now there are occasions where that is different but that's a good rule to start off with after you've done that what you have to do is actually not have the upholstery on the chair and I brought in one that I haven't put the upholstery back on so you can see but it's real easy if it's being sold you ask permission you remove the back black fabric off the bottom and then you look and in this case you can see there's some glue blocking here and you'll see these look new because they are or newer and then you have down here these look old and they are because they're older and you'll see in an 18th century chair they blocked differently than they did in a 19th century chair or as we do today this is a this blocking is a lot stronger than what they did early but this is this is what you want to see when you see these you get really excited now there is one other type of blocking they can do and it can be like a half circle and it'll be really small as well the nice thing in a large set of chairs, you have a good chance of being able to find a lot of these, or at least some of these will be in the chairs. If it's only one or two chairs, it's very easy to have all the blocking replaced. The other thing that we would look for, and you, you, have, you can't see it here because this chair is tight, it's been re-glued, but these are mortise and tenon joints, and that means this seat rail has a piece of wood that continues on into the leg right here. If it's 19th century, it'll have a doweled joint, and everyone's familiar with what dowels are, that, that technology did not exist until the 19th century. So if it has dowels, unless it's been an improper repair, it has to be, it just has to be so 18th tell century. tell me what's the value of this because it's... Of oh, that's very exciting because it's a set of eight chairs uh, with two arms, which is incredibly rare, and these date about 1775. They're worth probably about $27,500 once they're done. That's wonderful. What a, what a great story. Oh, Thanks, yes. Jay. Thank you.